What's up, everyone? What's up? Welcome to Planet Xbox episode 12. I think we are episode 12. 12. I'm your host, Best Bot Kid Smooth, and my co host is here. I ain't Lord. What's going on, guys? Attic. Yeah, you know, we definitely got a pretty interesting conversation for you guys. We are, yes, I, I'm sure some of you saw my, you know, they sh uh, Xbox should buy the Boulders Gate devs. We will be talking about that because I got some choice words for these people. Absolutely, absolutely. And we're definitely going to be talking about that Starfield and Xbox marketing, <clears throat> along with some other things that came through this week. Good show. We're going to keep it quick, clear, and concise. Uh, but. <clears throat> Before we get into the show, just a quick uh, rundown, man. What have you been playing, Gaming Attic? Boulder's Gate 3, almost exclusively at this point. I played a little bit of Persona before I started Pers uh, Boulder's Gate, but ever since Boulder's Gate, I have like 20 hours almost in Boulder's Gate already. Wow, okay. Are you like So I'm guessing you're liking it. Is it the best RPG of all time like they're saying it is? <clears throat> It's really good. I would. I don't know about like best, but it's really good. Okay, and I've been playing Halo Infinite. Uh, my cousins uh, got me back onto the game. Been playing uh, that a little bit along with some NBA Two K. This is other game that I dropped on Game Pass called I think Nimba Numba or somebody. It's like a cooking game with a story. Um, pretty good. Been playing it on the um, Rogue Ally. Um, something I play on the go. Other than that, I've been keeping it low key. I've been playing through Xbox 360 games. I've beaten the Force Unleashed one and two. I think that all happened like last week. I don't know if I did if that was done during the podcast, but um, I've beaten both the Force Unleashed one and two via Xbox backwards compatibility. Great games, actually. Matter of fact, great games. Uh, Attic, we got some Patreon questions. You know, shouts out to the Patreon. Um, and shout out to Grace for making a, a, a quick cameo. Uh, but shout out to the Patreon and everyone, you know, um, involved in, you know, in hosting this and um, supporting us uh, by being a member, by being a subscriber. Shout out to BG for... Uh, yeah, I've noticed those questions are going up every week. You know, yeah. I get it. You know, people... Well, here's the thing. You know, I see people... I read the comments. I read the comments and everything. I know I shouldn't. It's always been... A weakness of mine i read the comments in, in that video that people are hating on me for you know that uh that we'll get to that it's like look this isn't the weapon will you know you, you're gonna get an xbox podcast talking about the surrounding topics of xbox sometimes we'll bring a playstation if it's big enough mm -hmm. you know clearly big showcases we'll talk about playstation but for the most part we're gonna be talking about xbox you know uh, sometimes kid smooth will check me and i'll check him like, we, we don't run this show to be a debate show. Yeah. I would say Weapon Will has a lot more of those characteristics than this show would. Yeah, um, you're absolutely right. Um, this is an Xbox podcast, and um, we're two individuals that play, you know, everything, a lot of things. You know, your, your catalog is a little bit more... Uh, you know, it's uh, funny. You could argue that I, I should be a PlayStation gamer. Yeah, you probably should, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, man. Let's get into the Patreon questions, man. Uh, let's go with Alex King, who blessed us with two questions. Alex King says, are we going to get a live stream with you two for Starfield? Since they're not promoting like y'all would want, put Starfield on yours backs like BG did with I Am Bread and Titanfall. Uh, I'll say this. I actually, though, if you think BG put Titanfall on his back, but see, Titanfall came out during my young... Actually, I launched my channel because of Titanfall. It was... It, I, I did... I, my channel became a gaming channel because of uh, Titanfall, and that was the game I was, uh, you know, showcasing. But, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it depends. Since... I don't, I don't think I don't... I think during launch, I will stream. Uh, Starfield during the you know the early access period, uh, I will stream Starfield. Uh, I'm not losing out on anything. The game's 30 FPS on console, so it's not like I could benefit from like VRR. So I wouldn't mind, you know, streaming uh, the game portions of the game. I won't stream the entire play since the game is like so big. I would only stream like I guess the opening, like everyone else, get through like you know, I don't know if the game is broken down in chapters or planets or whatever. Uh, and, and, and it'll be a journey because I've never really 
fully immerse myself in, into a Bethesda RPG like that. The last game I really done that with was Oblivion, and I don't even think I beat in that game. Uh, me, personally, I probably... Here's the thing. I, like, I'm trying a new approach with my channel. Mm -hmm. I ain't gonna, I'm going to be real with you guys. I'm scared half to death to stream on my channel mm -hmm. uh, every time I feel like I'm going to do it. Um, I'm having a good momentum right now on my mm -hmm. personal channel, yeah, you and I'm scared really that the retention rate might just screw up me in the algorithm, and it's 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 terrifying to do that. You know, I I've worked so hard for so many years to have an upscale trajectory on my personal channel that now that I'm seeing it, I'm just like, yo, do I really want to risk it? Nine times out of ten, doing a live stream on my channel wouldn't hurt it at all. But me, I don't want to take that risk. And that's just me. And then at, at the same time, you know, not trying to, like, brag. I'm not trying to upset anyone. But most likely with with good hopes, I'll be playing it before the game comes out. So by that time, I'll be so far into the game. I don't know if you guys want to see that portion of the game. Yeah, it makes sense. Hopefully you are blessed with that early access. And since we game share, um, I, I would be blessed with that <laughs> earlier access. So, at that point, you know, what I would be streaming would be mid game. If not, um, you know, I'll go with the early access like everyone else. But, uh, good question, Alex King. I'm going to go, we're going to follow up uh, with the next question, also from Alex King. He says, What game genre would you want revamped the most? Racing, action adventure, horror, or FPS? Etc. So this is open the question. I guess we could choose outside of what's there. Um, I'll say this: racing hasn't really. Uh, I think racing has has been refined uh, a lot, a lot. Um, you know, thanks to Forza Horizon opening up that open world type. That is just the perfect balance of fun and technical. Um, I would like to see combat racing games come back because I've been playing you know split second. As soon as the Activision deal goes through, I want I want to play Blur. Try to get my uh, hands on some Blur if they make it backwards compatible. Uh, but I like combat racers more, and we don't got enough of those. Action adventure is fine. Horror games, they've I feel like it have already had a resurgence with like the Dead Space remakes, the Resident Evil remakes, and the Outlast games. Uh, I think they've been doing a good job with the horror. Uh, Callisto Protocol, you know, they've done like they had like a a run of bunch of like horror s games. I think the games that need to be revamped would be your are pretty much our platformers uh platformers um aren't uh there's not enough of them they don't come out as often and when they do come out they're not as good i would love to see more platformers uh like classic uh games just be revamped in a way and and rebought to life um and modernized and um that i think that would be the a genre i think we should see revamped i think either f uh a first person shooter here's the thing though if you if you redo FPSs, I think you're going to make a lot of people upset. You know, for the most part, mm -hmm. that general crowd wants a particular type of game. So I would, I would agree with you on platformers. I think there is a way to do platforms because Nintendo has been moderately successful at it for the mm -hmm. past two or three decades. I just feel like they're the only people doing it. So you're not seeing like leaps and bounds pl mm -hmm. uh, success. Like you have like Celeste. That was an extremely popular platformer. You know, you, you can easily get popular platforms. And I would say that the studio that makes um, Psychonauts, what is that? I always be Double Fine. Double Fine. I would say that they, uh, they, they're a good studio to do that. Absolutely. Psychonauts 2, it was damn near my game of the year in 2021. Loved it. And I, I actually need to go back and play it again. Um, that was just such a great game. If you haven't played it, play it. It's on Xbox Game Pass. It's also available on PlayStation if you like. I actually, I might replay it on um, the Rogue Ally, actually. Next question comes from Dry the Gamer. He says, what generation of Xbox did you guys enjoy the most? I'm going to say the generation of Xbox... I enjoyed the most is easily the Xbox 360, but it's kind of a tough question because I'm prisoner of the moment. So 
And with Xbox, with their blurred generations, I love the Xbox One generation, especially early part Xbox One. Love the Xbox One generation. Um, and I love the Xbox Series the X generation. I like what they can do. Now, as far as game releases and stuff like that, yeah, there's some like hold, uh, uh, these, these holes and these gaps that both the Series the X and the Xbox One generation had. So by default, it is the Xbox 360, but I just love the capability of what the Xbox uh, series can do. But the Xbox 360, by far my favorite generation, it just came at a perfect time in my life. I, I would agree with you. Uh, 360, when it comes to that, I would say if if we're talking about like other other consoles, uh, I've really, really enjoyed like the PS2 era. Mm -hmm. And Nintendo, I enjoyed the GameCube era. The GameCube or N64 era. See, that's the thing. I love the PS2 era. In the GameCube era, but they, they're technically the same era. It's just that PS2, like, I, I jumped on the GameCube. I think GameCube literally Brit was the the gap. Like, I was on PlayStation from, like, from 2002 to 2000, maybe four, four or five. And then the GameCube carried me from 2000, 2004 to pretty much the launch of the Xbox uh, 360, where I traded in both my GameCube and my PS2. Uh, and use that as a down payment for the Xbox 360 when it was time to pre-order. Um, the other uh, uh, question comes from Serial Mint 23. He says, one got to go of Xbox new games. He said, this, oh, so this is a one got to go. He says, one got to go of Xbox new games to get canceled. <laughs> this is tough. This is tough. He says, one got to go. One game gets canceled. Fable, Perfect Dark, or Gear 6? I'm going to... Of one got to go, he says, of Xbox New Games, Fable, Perfect Dark, or Gear 6? This is actually fairly easy for me. Per Perfect Dark can get up out of there. Nah. Nah, Perfect Dark can get up out of there because I feel like Gear 6... You know, we got to see that conclusion of those decisions and the conclusion of the trilogy, four, five, and six. I'm definitely not getting rid of Fable. And Perfect Dart could stay in the N64 era for all I care because, to me, the other two have way more potential currently off of not seeing nothing than than Fable and, and than, than Perfect Dart does. Okay. I'm going to say Gear 6. Um, and I'm going to say Gear Six because it hasn't been announced or, 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 or uh, confirmed. Uh, but the, I a, think the point of this conversation is, we know that's coming. Yeah, but but it's going to be a while. It, it, and I get that, but how do we know Perfect Dark's not going to be for a while? You know, they had huge, uh, you know, rampant of of stuff going on with the studio. They've had ma massive names leave the studio. We don't know when that game's coming out. You could potentially see Gear 6 before you see Perfect Dark. Uh, I last saw Perfect Dark as a junior in high school or a sophomore in high school. So I was, what, maybe 15, 16? And I'm, it's been, I've already been, I've been waiting for Perfect Dark for a long time. The last time I saw Gears was technically to what, what 2020 when they did Hive Busters. So I guess to me, it's mad, like it's mad disrespectful to like not let Coalition finish fi finish their trilogy because you want to see a potential good perfect dart. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I. I, I not, not to mention Coalition carried the Xbox One on its back. Yeah, yeah. And you just want to be like, get up out of there. No, that's not that. I mean, hey, they could maybe they make another game, but um, if I'm being honest, I definitely obviously I want to see Fable finally release and be able to play with it because what they showed looks amazing. Perfect Dark, I have high hopes for. I have a lot of you know hype for what it potentially can be. Um, and like I said, I did a video on Perfect Dark a long time ago of what I wanted, and you know, hopefully they achieve that. Gear Six, obviously, I would love for it uh, to come in, love to play it and whatnot. But again, it's Gear Six <laughs> out of like eight games. Um, but, uh, hey, we'll see. Uh, the next question comes from Chill. He says, which Xbox character would fit perfect in Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter, and Tekken? One of each. I'll let you tackle that. Let me see. 
Which Xbox? I want to say. I want. So does it have to fit in all of them? Like a character you could see in every one of these, or? I think Arbiter. Arbiter. Because we've seen Arbiter and Killer Instinct, so I think it definitely, you know, vibes good. I, I could see a Master Chief too. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, projectiles would be like guns and, and stuff like that. I also could see a Doom Slayer, mm-hmm. the Doom guy. So I, I could see that too. It, the good thing is Microsoft got like stacks upon stacks of people that could be in, in fighting games right now. Absolutely. That's why Killer Instinct. You know, we're going to talk about it. Makes more sense right now. I'm gonna. I'm a cheat. I'm gonna say Jago you know, so- <laughs> for yeah. Tekken. I'm going to say Riptor for Mortal Kombat, and I'm going to say um oh man, I'm going to say Saberwolf for Street Fighter. That's uh that's that's, kind of, that's kind of like cheating. It's cheating. cheating you picked, but... <laughs> I, I picked Arbiter because I felt like Arbiter carried good over there. Yeah. You're picking the main roster. Like let's just let's spread the the eagle. Like just... yeah, yeah. I, I took people for the, the lone fighter game that Xbox has, which is uh you know, Killer Instinct. I didn't realize because I was doing a little research for the video I made today, mm-hmm. and I didn't realize how like much the studios were struggling to get that game out. Like, when when Galaxy took over Killer Instinct, you know, the first character was like TJ, the, the combo dude? Yeah, TJ combo. Mm-hmm. They had four weeks to make him. Yeah. They did a damn good job. If you consider, if you consider, like, how the game came about and the characters and, and just how the game, how fluid and the game was, if they took any four weeks to make hey, any let, character in the let, game, let's, that's crazy. Let's... Let's push pause and just go to this last one. Then we'll go straight into the Killer Instinct call. Okay. Uh, Meridian says, will we see a push in turn-based RPGs after the massive success known as Boulder's Gate 3? No. I hope not. We won't. Because I would say in a lot of ways, Divinity was a huge success too, both of them. And we didn't see a huge push towards that. Like, look... It's it's a mad success, and you'll see them try it out more. Yeah. But as far as like it ripping through the industry, and more and more st- people are trying that, I don't think that's realistic. Mm-hmm. I think you might have a couple people that try it, you know, put their feet in it. But here's the thing: games like that aren't easy to monetize in a Game Pass or you know a battle uh, battle pass. I didn't mean Game Pass, like a battle pass yeah. or. You know, they can monetize of DLCs, but a lot of these companies ain't going to get up. They, they're not going to even get up out of their bed unless they can put a battle pass in there. Like, yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't know. I hope not. I'm not a. I'm not a fan of like these terms. I would like it to. I would like a couple of other studios trying their the the vein out because I do think it's a mad successful game, and I actually think that you know if you would actually have an open mind to stuff and not just be a. a a casual do bro gamer smooth you actually might like that game mm, too much time too much time um really yeah. let's get into uh, the main you know subject matter now we got a uh, couple things that happened this week and one of them happened like uh within the last 24 hours and that is killer instinct being updated and uh they're gonna you know update it upgrade it and they're making some enhancements uh, uh, for the Xbox Series consoles, and it's going to be a part of Evil, uh, so to get players back into the game. And this is this is they're calling it with a 10 year anniversary update. As you guys know, Killer Instinct uh, was reborn and and le- released the launch title for the Xbox One back in November of 2020 uh, of 2013. And uh, we thought they gave it up on Killer Instincts, but I no, did. I was convinced that yeah. they. I thought they would eventually retouch it, but I thought it would only be in, like, certain circumstances. Like, they pick up WB or pick up a studio that can actually make the game. I didn't think they would ever recontract anyone to make it. Yeah. I think the only reason we're seeing it now is because Galaxy uh, was up for hire again in some way, shape, or form. I don't know how that happened. Yeah. And they're more comfortable going back into business with someone they've already worked with with this particular game. Yeah. The, thing, the crazy thing about Killer Instinct... 
The original developer of the launch version, which was season one, was I think Double Helix. And they, I don't know what happened with Double Helix, but then Iron Galaxy took over for season two. I, Microsoft, honestly, for a franchise like that, you have no studio to, to make it, but they have to acquire, they have to acquire them. I'm sorry, I, I hate, I know people hate talking about acquisition talks, but like, you have a franchise that really nobody can work on. And that's, that's why, I believe, uh, Attic, I don't know if you noticed, but that's the reason why Microsoft had to start acquiring studios, because they had a bunch of IPs and a bunch of games that they themselves didn't make. They contracted out another studio, and then you, that's how you end up with situations like Alan Wake and freaking Quantum Break and, and stuff like that. Wrong. Rise, and you can't do nothing about it, like a, sequel, a sequel or anything like that, because you don't own a studio. Um, so Killer Instinct, like, and I'm, I'm happy to see, you know, Iron Galaxy see, come back, because Season 2 was dope. They did a good job with uh, Season 2. I think we lost um, Attic for a bit. Um but uh, season season two was dope, and they they season three was only disappointing because they added characters, but they didn't add story content, and that was one of the cool parts about season two, which I still technically haven't beaten um, all the characters. I haven't played with all the characters uh, throughout the season, and I I can definitely matter of fact I'm going to reinstall Killer Instinct now to do. I don't know if I should wait though until the upgrade though. Probably, Probably at this point wait for the upgrade. Yeah, Probably should yeah. wait. I think the good thing is this shows that Microsoft's actually listening to some degree. Mm -hmm. uh, Might have took them years to do it. And, and I think that they would have jumped on this a lot sooner than this, but they didn't have a studio that could could work with this. And I think, mm -hmm. I think you could... If they come out and they do good coming out the gate, maybe they make one more new character. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if you see like someone big going in the, in the game, like a Master Chief or something like that. Something that's iconic that can get the you know the the streets filled again i wouldn't be surprised if they buy the studio this time because yeah because yeah. you know i i think didn't they get bought by someone i think amazon but amazon clearly has one foot in and one foot out of the industry and yeah. if amazon's letting them co contract the studio to to work on killer instinct again mm -hmm. that might have already been a conversation it's yeah. like okay let's see how this game's going let's see what we can do with this game let's see if you know, there's still a lot of feedback and there's still a lot of energy in this in this in the scene. Mm -hmm. And then we'll talk about buying. I think the moment this game hits even a little bit of success, Microsoft's going to pull out the wallet and buy the company because they're not they don't want to lose Killer Instinct for another decade again. Yeah, absolutely. Um, hopefully, yeah, I think they I, and I hope this 10 year anniversary update isn't the last of it they need to do something with it at least something to hold our appetite until they do a proper sequel but this one game has lived a long time and they've and they've updated it uh you know a couple times so even if they want to go based off the this game and just you know make it a live service game um resurrected that way the game looks good it already runs at 60 fps and I believe the game's also already 4K uh, because of the X. It, was, it got Xbox One X enhanced. So I'm curious of what other enhancement they're going to do. Um, I'm, I'm really curious. Maybe 120 FPS. Maybe um, they, they add ray tracing. I don't know what they could possibly do. Uh, to, but the game looks fine. It has a, 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 a particular art needs, style. Uh, the, I don't know what they can do differently to, to really upgrade it. It definitely needs some kind of improvement in terms of like textures i would say you would see a texture update a texture upgrade, you'll probably okay. yeah you'll probably see like uh that 4k patch will work on that because you could tell like when i was trying to make the thumbnail for it it was rough trying to find a decent resolution picture of the damn game okay so you know they'll probably fix that probably do some you know stuff on the back end maybe the coding needs a little bit touch up yeah and i think you'll hear within a year there'll be another massive character in that game do you, you think they uh, choose a Bethesda Zenimax character? That'd be interesting. Who do you think it would be, though? Uh, Doom Guy. Doom Guy. That would be interesting. Yeah, I don't you know. know you know, it'd be crazy if 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 they do. You know, th this is this is clearly like like I what, what's that thing? What they call like pie in the sky? Whatever it's called, like something that's not attainable. Uh, like this is reach, clearly uh, a pipe dream. This is definitely a dream. It'd be crazy if they like 
they put Doom Guy in here as like an antagonist, and they make a story revolved around like these characters and Killer Instinct in his world. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah it, it, I think that would be cool because I, I think that's the biggest thing. They need a good narrative driven because one thing you could say about Mortal Kombat, even though I've been told it's not the most competitive game, the story is almost second to none. Yeah. And people yeah. will literally buy Mortal Kombat just for the narrative. You know, Killer Instinct needs a little bit of that. You know, if they're going to introduce a Halo and Master Chief, you know, it'd be cool. Like I said, you know, I think Master Chief and uh, Doom Doom Guy need to be in one game. I think that would be be crazy. Yeah, you know, do do a uh, do a mission where maybe it's not Doom Guy, but it's like a villain, and Master Chief is the second character in the in the expansion, and he is leading the other people to fight him. You know what I'm saying? Or, yeah, I mean, or since Arbiter's already in the game, have Arbiter get possessed by someone, and Master Chief shows up to help you get him back. Like, yeah, yeah, that's weird because they got all the villains from the games. They got Arbiter and they got General Ram. What? Yo, what happens if they put? Uh, I know they probably yeah, wouldn't Rash. do it now. It ones that they put um the dude from Halo Wars, uh, Atriox. Atriox. But I, I don't know if they would do that because you know I they, feel like they they want to sunset that character now, and that's sad because Atriox was such a why good would they character. Do that without they they can't sunset him without putting him in the mainline Halo game. I, I think I think his story's done. That's stupid. I, 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 that's the, that's I that's do. why I don't like about three four three is their inability to pick a vision and stick with it. Well, like, they, that's they stupid. They, they low key let the, the the community bully them into going other directions. The Look, Halo's community is garbage because it's mixed between new breed and old breed fuckheads. That regardless, don't know about if the they're game. right or wrong, mm-hmm. three four three is never going to be able to grab Halo by the balls mm-hmm. unless they tell the community. I know you think something's wrong, and there is some missteps that we did. Regardless of what you say, the marketing, fighting the same dude over and over again in Halo Five, rock with us. Because you'll see what we see at the end. But they don't do that. The moment they see any kind of like like the ground shaking a little bit, they're like, oh, abandoned ship. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Those are horrible people to, to, with the vision. Because their, their vision. It's like, it's like the killer instinct. I saw when I was I was looking at a video, it was like kind of like a, a documentary on killer instinct. And mm-hmm. when the lead dude, the dude that was actually on the, the camera that – when they reintroduce the coming back, he's still there. And he was like, he, I saw like an older, uh, an older interview with him. And he said, look, he said, you know, Django had this healing ability. And I don't know if he still does. I don't play head to, uh, head to head fighters, but he would heal himself. And apparently it was so broken. The community was screaming at them. This needs to be nerfed. Now mm-hmm. they never did it. And people was getting so upset because it was so broken. So he's like, look, like I, I think, the healing ability is just a symptom of what needs to be fixed. We don't know what needs to be fixed yet. Rock with us. We got this. Yeah. And he said it took him like four months. He found that it was actually he he was a good he was a good run up to everyone. He didn't really have any bad matchups. So for the most part, his negatives could be easily could be easily remedied just by using one of the move sets. Gets him closer to them. So they ended up nerfing his jump kick that that threw him into their into their range which which directly affected how his healing ability worked because he can't clear that distance as quick Mm -hmm. so he can't get that health quicker and and he said you know a lot of fighting communities a lot of communities in general would have buckled under that pressure they would have nerfed the healing ability we didn't do that we wanted to fix we wanted to still let him have what made him special but we wanted to find a final way to make it more balanced. Yeah. Yeah. I and mean, he said it was like a month, and then no one bitched about Django's healing ability ever again. Yeah, that's how you got to be sometimes. You can't be afraid to make decisions. That's the one thing I, uh, you know, respect about you know Naughty Dog. Um, you know, they 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 made their decision of what their the direction they were going to go with Uncharted, the, the direction they were going to go with The Last of Us, and they just stuck by it. You know. Um, and it, but they, at the end of the day, they got a really good game. So, um, shout out to you know Iron Galaxy, uh, the Killer Instinct devs for you know keeping the game alive, doing a uh, you know a relevant. And they seem generally, 
they seem generally excited to be working on Killer Instinct yeah. again. I'm just curious what happened. Like, they might tell us a PR statement what happened between that relationship. Mm -hmm. Maybe it wasn't just the the, the buyout. Mm -hmm. Maybe there was more bad blood going on there because maybe Iron Galaxy got tired. Why ain't you buying us? We've been making your game for like five years at that point. Or maybe it wasn't I mean, that they, they, long. Dave, I mean, Dave did season two and season three, and like the last of the updates came in like 20, uh, maybe. The last update was like, I think, an Xbox One X update. Which maybe was Microsoft wouldn't give them, you know, uh, a, a bumped up contract. Maybe there was a few reasons because, you know, if Iron Galaxy was happy making uh, Killer Instinct, they never would have went to Amazon to be bought in the first place or accepted their proposal mm -hmm. in the first place. Yeah, they gotta fig they gotta figure that out, man. <laughs> maybe, maybe Amazon gave them a price, and they went to Microsoft. Microsoft's like, we don't need Killer Instinct. Rock get, get, rocks off. <laughs> yeah, mistake though. They, but you know, I'm glad that I'm glad they're doing something with it. it. It's gonna bring new life to it. It's gonna bring more players back to it. Um, hey, we'll see. Maybe we'll see. You know, that thing climb back on Steam, uh, climb back on the Game Pass numbers and stuff like that. So, uh, I think I think it's I think it's pretty good. Net. I think within two years, you'll see Killer Instinct being a completely different lane. I think you'll see one or two characters come to this Killer Instinct, and I think either they'll re re revamp it to a new engine yep. and just keep it Killer Instinct, or they'll literally just make Killer Instinct 2. Absolutely. Yeah, man. Looking forward to it. They need to. Uh, next thing is the you know the week's hottest game. That's Baldur's Gate 3. I've seen you've been playing it. Uh, for the last 20 hours, you did a video, controversial video, uh, pinning on a comment section. Uh, people, even Twitter, I saw people throw some shots at you because you brought up the term acquisition. Border Gate 3, man, let me know, like, what's going on? Why is this game so popular right now? Why is it over half, why is it, you know, 630,000 copy uh, uh, users on Steam? Why are PlayStation fanboys hyping it? And why is it a 94 Metacritic <laughs> based on four reviewers man give me the lowdown because i only have been following this game for one reason and that's their lack of you know xbox release and the developer excuses but i'll let you uh you know educate me a little bit on this i think it's immersion i think it's choice you know a lot of games give the illusion of choice but when it comes down to you really got no choice mm -hmm. this game you generally got choice you know uh, right now for those of you who don't know i'm just gonna like kind of give a, a a recap on the sense of the game so far so if, you know definitely you know mute me it's not going to be like spoiler territory but like essentially you are captives in some ship at the beginning and they put this little worm in your head and the whole point of the game so far to me is get rid of that worm because these things look like the davy jones from pirates of the caribbean <laughs> that put the worm in you and that worm transforms you into them and you know, right now, it seems like I have the ability to either rock with that worm or not rock with that worm because it could talk to you in your head. And, you know, it, it's it's a fun game, and it actually gives choice. Like, when I'm giving a decision, it's got that old school, like, Dungeons & Dragons roll a dice. I, I never really got into that. I played it a couple times, but I didn't really get into it in, like, big ways. Mm -hmm. It actually makes me want to try. And, you know, I'm sitting there playing this, and... And they said, I need I, I need a, a skill check of five. And I'm like, okay, I got a 20 dice. There's no way I roll a five. Roll a four. I, I, so it, it, it's fun because, like, there's actual consequence. When you don't do that skill check, shit can go left really fast. It, it, one, for instance, I, I, I was taking a, a, a prisoner through a camp. And every time I came across a guard, I had hit a, a, a skill check. Yo, why you got this prisoner? What's going on? And if I didn't roll that 15, like three or four times going through this camp, the whole camp turns on me and starts fighting me. Damn. Um. So how's the combat in this game? Like how is it's entirely turn based? Like turn. It, it, so it's, it's like you hit something, they do something, the AI does something back, and it's like whoever takes drains the health first, right? It goes. It goes off of speed. You know, I, I'm not big into. Uh, I don't know exactly how they determine. I would say it goes off of speed because normally my road goes first or mm -hmm. around the first. So pretty much it goes off stats, uh, abilities. If people have abilities, I would say that let them go first. Or, you know, there's an ability where I can 
regain my my I, they call it ap and in, in divinity i think i don't know what they call it in here but okay it would let me go again essentially it'll let me like refresh even though i've went so it's stuff like that you know it's not <laughs> like a final fantasy turn base it's more like an XCOM turn base with magic and swords so not for me yeah definitely not for you i tried to get you to play the original dragon uh uh divinity yeah. I tried to get you to play uh, Divinity, the original Sin, the first one. I remember I bought it for us just so you would try it. Yeah. You played like 45 minutes and you ain't never touched that game again. Yeah, so I have nothing to be envious about in regards to Boulder's Gate 3. So even if that is a PlayStation... Well, and now... So my thing is, why is it so popular? This, this, this is the third game. Is this game naturally this well, popular? Divinity, original Sin 2 was popular. You know, it... it, it, it caught a lot of eyes i think this is just consistency i okay. think you know they really i think the boulder gate name helped it a lot of old school people were willing to give it a shot i think the reviews are helping it i do think the fact that they made some statements about not being able to be ran on the xbox mm -hmm. i'm sure we'll get to that here sooner or later i'm sure that helped get it out there more might necessarily help to you know get popular but i'm assuming that rose the name of the game a little bit more yeah yeah, uh, I think, and now people are, you know, shout out to RGT85. A lot of people has been, you know, going at my, you know, thoughts for lack, lack of marketing for Starfield. This is a game that's doing very well on Steam, probably at the right at this moment, second best selling game on Steam all year. I think behind Hogwarts Legacy uh, right now, and it may overtake that. We, we don't know yet, um, but um, it, it's done this relatively with no marketing. And and that's pretty much just you know you know a following word of mouth internet gamers know about the thing and I, I feel like even though there was no traditional marketing they had a few marketing beats though that helped propel uh, this game uh, first marketing beat is the PlayStation showcase state of play whatever uh, it being exclusive uh, developers coming out and you know anything negative to Xbox is gonna go viral you're gonna get a, a team behind you. Um, I don't even though I do think here, here's the thing I I don't believe in intentional I, I do think people have like they're biased in the company mm -hmm. but I don't think that people generally go with shitting on Xbox just for clicks I think people go on okay what is people upset with today what can we captivate on people what are people emotional about today I think it just goes wherever the waves are going if if today if this week's a shit on PlayStation week Whole industry going to shit on PlayStation because it's good for their bottom line. If this week shit on Xbox week, whole industry going to shit on Xbox. It's just, unfortunately, it's either all one way or all the other way. You don't really see it, you know, uh, tick for tat. I'm very interested to see how Starfield does. Yeah, so the game, um, the, the thing is, though, even though I don't think they intentionally did it, it their willingness to keep on speaking about it you know, allowed people to rally for it. So the thing is, it's like, it's got a fan base on a platform that doesn't even exist on yet, even though it's coming out on PlayStation uh, next month. Um, the fact that, oh, this can't be... The thing is, I don't like this excuse that it can't be run on an Xbox Series S because of split screen, the lack of RAM, all this other stuff. And it's just like, you think about... All the other places you can play this game, games they made in the past. I'm thinking about the Rogue Ally. I'm thinking about the Steam Deck. And I'm like, bro, like, you know, the Series S can't be that impossible to develop games for. So what the thing is, is that I feel like their commentary allow other developers who don't make, sh who make shit games uh, to come out and speak. It, 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 it un unofficially became a marketing tactic for them. And it's going to sell them a bunch of copies on PlayStation because PlayStation gamers feel like they got something special and that their console is capable of something of doing something that the Xbox ser uh, the series consoles isn't capable of. Which, when I look at the game, I'm like, what the fuck? I mean, I, it, what can't run this shit? You know what I mean? And, 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 and no, maybe it's, it's just my, my ignorance I, I, it, to it. I, I I have to like push back on that. This game is a very intense game. Okay, it, it runs my 3060 Ti kind of rough sometimes. And, you know, I'm not saying that the Series S couldn't run this because I'm sure it's a dumbed-down version. I'm sure the console version doesn't 
have all the nooks and crannies that the the high end PC version with all the settings up to high. But what I will say is the Series S is a challenge to develop on. I've I've been told by multiple people, but it's not necessarily on it can't run it. It's just a little bit more work. Some developers don't have the manpower to achieve that work in a timely manner. I do think that when it came to looking at what was realistic with the Series S and X, they had to just be realistic about the matter. Okay, you know, we can't develop the Series S and the X version. Regardless if maybe it added another two months on to onto the uh, the cycle. I do think they're looking at that as like, look, you know, Microsoft has a way of doing things we can't just release on the X right now until we get the S version working. Um, we have this game coming out next month. It's going to compete with Starfield. Uh, so let's go ahead and put 100% of our forces behind, you know, uh, making sure the, the PC version comes out bug-free, making sure uh, the PlayStation version comes out without a hitch, and then let's release the, you know, Borders Gate 3 on the Xbox at a later time when they don't have to worry about, like, a Starfield hovering over them. You know, I, I there is a realm probably where they could have high, got high, extra help to help finish that port for the Series S. But let me ask you, Smoo, is it a good idea to do that when you have Starfield, probably one of the most hyped games in years coming out around the same time? Would you want your game being around that game on the same platform it's coming out? Because on PlayStation, they can avoid that. They don't really got to deal with that. You know, Starfield's not on PlayStation, so they're kind of you know, in their own little vein there. But I would say this is a very long game. It's a very RPG-focused game. I would say Boulder's Gate's probably going to be more RPG-focused than Starfield will because mm -hmm. it's just a more immersive thing. It's got skill checks, probably more. But it's they're both in the RPG vein. Mm -hmm. So my question to you is, would you want that game coming out in, within a week apart from Starfield? I mean, if, if that's the case, I mean, Starfield's biggest player base is probably going to be on PC. So, yeah, if they it release it early... Okay, they did a good job releasing it early. You're either going to up your release or you're going to delay it, right? So I think what they did was they, 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 they made a strategic move. I feel like I don't think any of their lack of Xbox releases has anything to do with the development issues. These guys have been making games for 50 fucking years. So, like, like the last thing I want to hear is optimization. Time frame is still time frame. Time yeah, time but is people still are time still time taking time and making games for a Nintendo Switch. People are still taking time and making sure their game is optimal on a Steam Deck. Like, I don't want to hear here's it. The thing, like... Here's the thing. Oh, okay, hold up, hold up. You've been doing the job you've been doing for a while. We're not going to say what it is. Yep. Obviously, if you had to, you can do two, three days all in one day if you had to. Because mm -hmm. you've been doing it for a while. You're, you're well-versed in that line of work. Yeah. But if you don't have to, are you? No. But don't, I'm not going to make it, I'm not going to throw up some freaking ex, lame ass excuse. Here's the thing. They, this is what they got working for them. This, they, what they did was they had an opportunity. They, obviously it's a PC focused game, but if they're going to put it on console, you're going to put it on a console that's popular. PlayStation 5 is popular. When PlayStation markets your game, it has a potential to, to, to sell a lot. So if you, if you're not going to, if you don't want to put your resources in multi-platform, you go with PlayStation. What they did was they saw opportunity. It was like, okay, well, they see there's a huge vacancy on PlayStation coming in September. Uh, uh, I mean, Starfield's supposed to be a big release. You never know because Microsoft don't market it in that way. But there's a big release, RPG release, that's supposed to be a huge event, and it's not coming to PlayStation. We can pretty much, you know, put our game on PlayStation and release it in September and not worry about the Starfield effect on that platform. So what they did was they they're, you, they're really taking advantage of Starfield not being developed on PlayStation. Pure speculation. I don't know if that's what they're doing. But I to mean, me, speculation. If you're mean, looking at it yeah, like six at... months ago, mm -hmm. and they're trying to figure out when these games would come out, what they need more time off, do they need to delay the game? But they're looking at something like, okay, the Series S and X, it's going to take more time to develop for the S. Yeah. Because you got a lot more barriers. you got more bottle caps. Uh, bottle than next. you would for the bottleneck, my bad, mm -hmm. than the Series X. So it's like, at that point, it's not a matter of if you can get the Series S running. It's a matter of when. And when you have you... investors breathing by, behind your, down your neck saying, when's this game coming out? And, and you have this console that you have to probably put a couple more months into, into work to make the, it work on the Series S. And I think it's mainly a split screen something. So I don't Which know if that's stupid. something... 
It's just stupid. Uh, it, but but if that's is the it? biggest because it, three no no three four three had themselves said that that's hard to do. Did they not? So what? It's but it's an unnecessary so, feature. So but guess, guess what? Did that so stop two, Halo Infinite from coming out? Did it stop coming? But they were stop willing, it from coming but, out though. But three four three was willing to abandon it. If you're not willing to abandon it, it would have it would have been delayed. But it didn't stop the game from coming out. Just why do you need the feature? Who's playing that game? Who are you? In? But here's the thing: Who are you to tell a studio what feature is important to them and what feature is not important to them? Sure, How many people are playing this game split, split screen right now? It doesn't matter. They're still on PC because that's so, where so all all let, let, let me just are ask right you: let, Are you so you are for less choices? I'm 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 against split. That's screen what you just said. You're for I, I'm, I'm against less split choices. screen multiplayer in 2023. Okay, then you're four less choices. All right, Let's just be, you want you you to hear something choices. funny? You hear something funny for the team that's avoiding Starfield? Guess when the PlayStation version is launching? What? September six. That's what I'm saying, dude. What, They're cornballs, man. They're cornballs. But but, man. but them <laughs> as a studio, they're like, look, it, six months ago. I'm not saying. I'm just speculating. It's like we're gonna take more time. Let's just delay the version that's going to, first off, if we put it on this platform, it's probably going to flop anyway. And on top of Starfield there, in general, it's going to flop. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, 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 res I respect it. I do. It's like, I do think it should have came out the same day. Mm -hmm. But as a business move, I can understand mm -hmm. why delaying the game just to make sure it came out on Xbox isn't favorable to them. I don't know, man. I don't like. You know what? I'm, I'll, I'll say this. Shout out to was it Latharian? Latharian? I don't know. I butchered their name like fifty uh, times. Shout out to them. There's a the person in my comment section mm -hmm. that literally like so showed the pronunciations for the the studio. I'm, I'm going to say Larian. Larian, yeah. Shout out to Larian. them on the launch game launch on Steam. It, it has over 630 uh, concurrent players. Mad successful. Mad Very successful. successful. Um, it, it probably shot its way into a game of the year nominee. Um, uh, you know, and I'm not mad. I'm not mad at that. Do you want to talk about my video? Yeah, let's talk about it. So I made a video earlier this week. It was actually a day ago, mm -hmm. probably closer to two days at this point. I made it yesterday, so I guess it would be a day ago. And I said, uh, Lorraine Studios, you know, is there a conversation we need to have of buying them? Because here's my thing. Like, I had people asking. And it's like, okay, it's an interesting conversation. First off, I want to talk to the people that watches my content. You are never going to bully me into not making content I want to make. Never. If I want to make a video talking about why I want Microsoft to buy every damn thing in the industry, that's my channel. That's my content. Obviously, I would never do that because I don't believe Microsoft should buy everything. So mm -hmm. I was like, okay. You know, a couple people's asked. There's like four or five that, uh, you know, sent me a Twitter message asking me that question. There was someone, a couple people on Discord when I was in a voice chat playing it that was asking that question. I'm going to make the video. Jesus Christ, you would think I was talking shit about PlayStation people. I got attacked by Xbox people saying they didn't want that game being mm -hmm. bought because it, it seemed like Xbox people only want publishers being bought, not individual studios. I got attacked by PlayStation people clowning on me for making a video about Microsoft buying a company. And I got attacked by the army of the PC people coming in there in lines saying we don't want this studio being bought, we want them to keep their independence. I feel you. My issue isn't that people voice their opinion. My issue is if you would watch the video, sure, maybe it was maybe I should have been a little bit more cleaner when it comes to the thumbnail because I said Xbox by Lorarian or whatever the Lorian. fuck their name mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. Maybe I could have put a should there. But I've made those thumbnails. It was it wasn't on if I was trying to deceive people. Putting should in that makes the thumbnail look weird to me, and I don't know why. Because I, because I, I like my thumbnails to look symmetrical to some degree and have like a formula. And Xbox normally is at the top. Now I could have replaced, throw Xbox down, put should at the top, should Xbox buy, but that's four lines of text, and I've learned making three lines of text is more successful because it pops out more. I can make the, the letters bigger. Feedback, I get it. Okay, net next time when it comes to stuff like that. I'll try to be a little bit better when I make the thumbnail because maybe it was a little misleading. I get that. That's good feedback. But what I don't like is the people that was in the comment section not even watching the video. Look at this Xbox dude. 
It's like, dude, if you would listen, if you would watch the video, you would see that I said Microsoft already owns enough studios in this vein. I don't want them mm. to strengthen their strengths. I want them to strengthen their weaknesses, and I don't think this is a good fit. But if Microsoft bought them, I'd understand because it is a good studio. But no one watched it, so people just got, went off the headlines. And this is a prime example of an issue in the industry where people just read article headlines and they don't actually read the article. Yeah. It's like, look, you can, I understand if you want to make comments on it, but like to sit there, if you want to talk about the issue, that's one thing. If you want to talk about, okay, I don't think Microsoft should be expanding this big. That's one thing. Don't attack my opinion when you didn't even listen to my opinion. But to be fair, you made a comment saying that, no, it's a problem with people responding to the title of the article rather than reading the article. I mean, it's the same thing. I mean, I mean, were you thoroughly honest in the title of your video? Even the tweet in the tweet in the tweet it, it, it's, promoting the video. See, okay. In okay. the tweet promoting the video, where on, you on, had room, on. where you had room to actually clarify that. All right. So hold up, hold up. We will. Okay. So here's the title. I don't know if you could see this. Mm -hmm. But I guess people could blow it up if they want. It says Xbox by Lorraine Studios because Bo because of Boulder's Gate Three question mark. It's say it's 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 phrasing it as a question. Should they buy them because of the success of Border Gates Three? I don't think this is the issue. This is a, it's the it's the thumbnail because the thumbnail doesn't really voice voice that as a question. But here's the thing. This thumbnail is supposed to work with this title. The only reason people only saw this thumbnail is because it was on Twitter. When you're on YouTube, you see both of them together. On yeah, Twitter, all people only saw title, this. Though. The thumbnail but has no, a title. The thumbnail, if you notice, I haven't why been doing that title? lately. Why, why read the title of the video if the thumbnail has the a title? The thumbnail does not have the title. It does. It says Xbox does, by does Lazarian, this, Larian. Does this have the title? Xbox finally did it? Does that have the title? It has a title. Xbox finally did what? Oh my god. It looked down here. Xbox going crazy. Is that a title? Yes. If, if you just read that, would if you I just... Read, I was like, yeah, like, I'm going to click the video. All right, Xbox going crazy on Xbox what? Xbox going big. Is that a title? Yes. They're all titles. They're all titles. That, that is a thumbnail they're, that they're I all like titles to title. navigate no, you can give, to the content. You can give me feedback that Hold maybe on, this should have had a... What? No, go ahead, go ahead. Hold on one moment. Maybe you can give me feedback that this should have had a question mark or I should have put should Xbox by uh whatever the studio's name is. That's fair criticism. I need to take that L. Completely agree. But when you're over here and you look at Twitter, well, X, whatever they want to call it now, and I, and I blow up the tweet, it has 137 thousand impressions a hundred and thirty seven thousand smooth that's that's just a bunch of people that they don't care about the opinion they just care about the topic and that's fine attack the topic if you don't want xbox buying the studio because you love them you want them to be there independent attack the topic okay but don't attack my opinion if you didn't listen to my opinion okay look jw even knew it was going to happen he put like a little gif of someone running out of the room. Yeah, because uh, we get made fun of for wanting Xbox to buy everyone. Now, I will say, good video. Um, I, 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 would, I wouldn't be surprised if that was something in the future uh, that they do, but I don't need them. I don't want them. I don't want a developer that's not willing that, that's to develop for the Xbox platform. I, so, you know... It wasn't really a debate on whether or not they should buy them or not. It was just a conversation. Yeah. It's like, you know, I personally feel like they don't need this studio. Now, if they wanted to strengthen their their tight grip on the JRPG, uh, not the JRPG, the, the, the Western mm -hmm. RPG market, then that would make sense. But I don't no. think that's necessary. I think, you know, they, they, they got the outer, they got Obsidian, Obsidian, they got Bethesda Software Studios. Yep. They got the people making Fable. That's an RPG play. Yep. Uh, play at this point. Yep. They got plenty of people making this content. They don't. It, it, they got Bethesda Software Studio. You can argue that they have made the best RPGs ever been on the market. Mm -hmm. And then sure, then they've the been second, buggy as hell. And then the second best, which is Obsidian. Yeah, so it's just like, look, the only people they're really missing is this studio they have the, they, and, and CD Project Red and Bioware. They have the they have the protege and the they have the pioneer and the protege on the same team. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, you know, 
Xbox you is not going to release a whack RPG ever again. You know what's crazy? They they have like the grandfathers of RPG on their team. Like if they if they want to get a chokehold, they can. They should. They 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 do it by either getting acquiring Bioware from EA or they acquire CD Projekt Red and call it a day. Say those three, the last prominent Western RPGs that are making critically acclaimed games. I don't think CD Projekt Red would sell. Um, I, I do think they had like a lot of stuff they had to do after Cyberpunk, but I do think there is a point where you know maybe they'll you know look at uh, Lorarian Studios. I don't think they'll. I don't even think they'll buy anything in this. Maybe if this studio came to them and was like, "We need you to buy us," maybe they would look into that. But I don't think they're gonna approach them. You know, if someone came to them and it was for the right price, Microsoft probably signing a check. But I don't think Lorarian Studios is going to approach them. Yeah, absolutely not. Not, and again, you know, I have my selfish reasons why I wouldn't care uh, or wouldn't want them. Um, we are going to talk a little bit about this. Uh, you know, developers, and it's because of this team, developers coming out actively speaking against the Xbox Series S. Sure, there were little murmurs and whispers uh, before leading up to lunch. There was some concern. Even the dude from ID was concerned after a point, but he still managed to work magic and get the Series S doing. You know. No ray tracing and 120 frames, whatever it was that they did. VRS uh, hired in 1080p, hired in 1440p uh, on uh, us, the Series S and whatnot. Um, these developers coming out and whining about, I don't understand why developers are doing this and what purpose does it serve? You get paid to make games and you get paid even more to make them I I exclusive or, or, or so to put them in Game Pass. It's like, why, what's causing these developers to come out? Because I've never seen these developers come out and, and talk about the Nintendo Switch, which is a weaker platform. Ne developers never, oh, I got to make my game, make sure it's, it's Steam Deck. They actually are eager. Some developers are eager to learn that their game is compatible with the Steam Deck and the Rogue Ally. But it's a problem getting the game on a Series S. Why can't the Series S have the same achievement feat? Like, oh, we got this on a Series S. We were able to do this. When it's the Steam Deck, yeah, we're able to, yeah, it's optimized for Steam Deck. Oh, look at our game on Nintendo Switch. But when it's the Series S, it's a, it's, a, it's a problem. I don't understand it. Like, these developers are getting on my nerve. They want to, you know, play sob story and, and want to make us feel bad. Oh, it took me too much of development time. You know what I mean? Oh, I got to hire new staff. I got to do this. I got to do that. Bro, you make games. You make games. <laughs> like so hold on are, are, are you trying to like say like a lebron thing shut up and play ball <laughs> like, shut, like, up, shut and up and make the game, shut, shut up and make the game brother yeah yeah uh, it, i can't 100 percent get on that because i think everyone deserves their opinion even if their opinion's whack or not it's horrible. and if this if this dude has a problem developing on the series s then you know it's two ways either there's an issue playing on the series s where he's not skilled enough uh, like the rest of the industry seems to be to continue to develop on the Series S. Um, my thing is, right, this entire situation, this entire gen, since the Xbox Series S came out, every game that has released on the Series X and has released on the Series S, and we've had a fair amount of games doing spectacular things. We have a handful of games that's utilizing ray tracing on a Series S. We have a handful of games... Uh, more than a handful of games running at 120 frames per second, more than a handful of games running at 60 FPS. We got games running with uh, VRS. We got games on Series S running at above 1440p and games on Series S running at um, 4K. Like, I don't like, I don't understand. Like, this, there's been, there's more than enough examples of the Series S running games at, like, significant levels for its price, pu pushing above its weight we got series s games i mean it could just faster be one of than ps5 that, games like it could be just like the studio that is working on this game just they they they're overworked mm -hmm. they don't have enough people working on the ports there's a lot of factors we probably don't know about you know i've been told by people in the know that you know for the most part this has been an issue in the industry but with time people have been learning their ways around the issues that the series s has like i'm not going to sit here and tell people that the series s and the x provide no issues in the industry i think we're going to see this get worse as the as the generation goes on but when a when a studio makes a 
a game for PC, I feel like there's less room for bitching at that point mm -hmm. because they're making that game for PC. Yeah. And yeah. a lot and a lot of the, the builds are weaker than the Series S is. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's what drives me nuts. There's a lot of games on uh, that, 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 that you, you, you make a game and you gotta you, you can't predict what PC build people have. You just got to hope the shit works. You got still people sh making their, their development stretch to the PS4. You got developers making their development stretch to the Nintendo Switch. But why is the series... With the Series S is stronger than both those platforms. And it's a problem... Like I, I don't I don't like these developers coming out and talking about it and making it like a, a problem and it's really nothing, man. Just shut up and make the game. Like do you want me to play the game or not? Or if, if that's the case, won't you, you know, sell your ass to PlayStation? Like, you know, become a, a second party PlayStation studio. If it's if all you want to do is make games for PC and PlayStation, then do that then. Cause I don't I ain't got time to hear about a developer because all developers do is turn me off to their game. Like, if you want to talk crap about optimizing your game for Xbox or one of the series consoles, you're turning me off on playing your game because you're giving me warning signs that your game may not be good on the platform I want to play it on. So, I don't know why it's a thing and why people are doing it, but the thing is, is that you get these devices that come out every fucking two weeks that got to play every game that's on PC, and developers are happy and ecstatic. It's a technical achievement <laughs> That my game's able to run think, on the Steam Deck or the Rogue Ally. Do, do you think this is, might be an issue that because we're starting to develop with more skews now in mind, where it's like a new thing now? Because obviously the Series S, uh, the Xbox One, the Xbox uh, One S, uh, the Xbox One X, the the PS4, the mm -hmm. PS4 Pro. We're about to have the PS5 and the PS5 Pro. Mm -hmm. Do you think that that's just an issue that you know these developers have to make games? Revol revol revolved around multiple SKUs for multiple platforms. Don't, I mean, I, I could feel like that's a, a valid argument that is just overwhelming. I mean, I get your point. They're developers. They should just develop the game and start complaining. Yep. But it's just like, you know, maybe because we're influencers and we have a little bit more say on, you know, what we do because we don't have like a, we don't work for like a company. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, most of us have like full-time jobs on top of that but when it comes to like our opinion there's not really anyone that can come from the woodworks and say yo shut up you know what i'm saying <laughs> like th th that that's why i'm a firm believer that if a studio developer wants to speak out on something they shouldn't be silenced okay but i i think we we're going around in circles here we can move on yeah, um, speaking of the Series S and Series X, uh, the Xbox consoles received a couple updates. Everyone should have the new dashboard, which uh, allows for more real estate for the background to show. The tiles are smaller. There's also a game background, so when you hover over the game's uh, you are met with a screenshot of the cover art of the game, which is cool. Nice touch. I know it's very PlayStation-esque. Xbox users also have the ability, Attic, this is where me and you come in to, uh, to play, to utilize the stream feature in Discord. So uh, for those who are, so for example, PlayStation, uh, PlayStation, both PS4 and I think PS5 has this feature, have the ability to stream like if you were in a party with somebody you could stream your game in that party and everybody you know sees what you're playing uh xbox now has the feature via discord to stream uh the broadcast your game to a pretty much a discord party from the console i think that's dope it, it's much needed it's a nice touch feature attic I don't that know actually you... might be like my next one of my videos coming up like yeah. Xbox just seems to always be ahead of the curve when it comes to features. Like on PlayStation, you still can't gift games. Really? You can't gift games on PlayStation. And the reason we, I know that is because IOP, you know, when oh, there's yeah, a game on giveaways, cover, yeah. I have to tell Soft to send me it. And on PlayStation, he always has to send me the, the, the money. He's like, yo, I can't gift you that. So. 
No, you're right. But on Xbox, he could just gift it to me. Yeah, that's um. All right, so PlayStation doesn't have uh, gifting, but yeah, Xbox does have gifting. Oh, Xbox also got another update to use Vimo. So you yeah, can... uh, PayPal, I think it's already there now. PayPal's been there, so that means you can utilize the feature of like the pay and like if you want to split your payments up in four payments, you can. Probably with a credit check. No, 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 no. That's like it's literally just it's that that. Feature... Are you talking about for games coming out? Yeah, it doesn't require a credit check to use like the pay and for via PayPal or, or Venmo. That's okay. just a they just it's just a pay over time, but you're it's still charging you immediately. You pay make the first payment immediately right then and there, and the next three payments are just like you know every week or every two weeks. But um, which is a cool feature. So there's a a, a di- in diverse ways you can consume games on the Xbox. Uh, there's also the feature to sync your controller. Pair your controller from the console directly without pressing the button, um, which is uh, pretty awesome. So a couple of cool updates for the Xbox uh, that you can use more convenient features, more cool features to make the console seem a little bit more next gen than the last gen um, Xbox One. Um, the other things that came out, we got a couple of news uh, items that came out. Both of these are considered leaks because I don't know if they were formally announced, but uh oblivion uh it's they're working on the some studios working on uh, an oblivion remake uh, which is elder scrolls 4 i think the oblivion remake uh, and it's supposed to come out next year or the year after uh but that's a rumor but uh the person reason why people are giving light and notice to this is because the develop the ex-developer or the ex-employee of the studio that's working on the game came out on one of those forums and he was verified uh, and, and so was the the studio he worked for was verified so they're adding credence to it and quake 2 remake which leak which is supposed to come out either this month or in october we'll find out at quake kong uh quake con uh i don't think it's a uh... yo hold it real quick you know they make lego pop tarts now ego ego or... pop tart that looks disgusting yeah, I, I'm sorry. I mean, I I like I, I like Eggos, but I don't like Pop Tarts. I mean, I, and we all had our moment in life where we had to eat Pop Tarts, and, and, and Pop Tarts, like every time I the, the taste of Pop Tarts make me throw up. But uh, uh, but that's pretty cool. That's pretty weird combination. But I, I can only imagine that's disgusting. Um, but yeah. So, Attic, what do you think of the Quake Oblivion remakes? The rumors, like, is there any truth to any of these? And you know, when should we expect them? Uh, I think the Quake one. I think that's real. I mm-hmm. think that's very real. There's too many people covering that at this point. Yep. And I think Oblivion. That's still up in the air. But it would make sense because I think Oblivion. I think Morrowind's too far back. Where and and then plus Morrowind is more RPG focused than the rest of them. I don't know if that would do well in the current market. Maybe stuff like uh, you know Baldur's Gate showing that you know hardcore RPGs can really sell well. Uh, Oblivion just would make more sense because it's got the Oblivion gates all in it. It's I think the the narrative is a lot better in Oblivion, in my opinion. Maybe it's because I haven't played Morrowind in like decades, so I can't mm. remember the story. But M- Oblivion would make sense. But my question to you is clearly, you know, it's rumored that Quake's coming out for PlayStation. If Oblivion came out, do you think that should be an Xbox exclusive? I think anything Xbox does with Bethesda and IPs should be exclusive. I but do it, too. But it, Yo, Quake, one thing, but man, you have a, an Oblivion remake. Let's say it's not a remaster, it's, it's a, a remake. If it's a real remake, um, like, and to my knowledge, Bethesda isn't doing it, right? But it's, at this point, it's a Bethesda and Microsoft IP, and which, which with exclusive ties... Uh, to Xbox, this should be an Xbox exclusive, but it won't be because st- Phil Spencer still has to fulfill that case by case scenario, so he doesn't look like a liar, and he's been fulfilling the case by case scenario. So I feel you. I think part of me is just like, if Oblivion can be an exclusive, and you're bringing it to PlayStation just to play nice. You're playing nice with a bully because the bully has no problem withholding their shit from your platform. Agree. So it, 
it's just I, I personally feel like if, if Oblivion legally is able to be on Xbox and PC only, it needs to be on Xbox and PC only. Yeah, the, the Xbox has to find a way to leverage its IP, its strength, to get people... If you're not going to get people... Uh, on a PlayStation to convert to Xbox, you're gonna get them in the Game Pass somehow, or get make them buy their game, your game on on Steam, whatever. But they gotta find a way to leverage. At the end of the day, you want to grow Game Pass, and the only way you do that is by content exclus- exclusivity, enhancing your library. And if you if you think about it, you have all these great games in Game Pass that can't be played on the PlayStation and whatnot, like, no brainer. Yeah, you, that's your key. That's your ticket to get people over into the Game Pass. And I, I don't like the way Microsoft operates and because the thing is that they have these ideas and they know that they need subscribers and memberships and, and, and sales and stuff like that, but they don't do the work to get those conversions. And it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. It's like, okay, Game Pass needs content uh, to, uh, for people to uh, come over your and and then you make the you release the game everywhere so it's like okay so you release it everywhere so you give no incentive to game pass give incentive to xbox give incentive to game pass if you don't do that you're not going to grow just like if you don't market your games they probably won't sell i got i got a big issue with like game pass in a way that i feel like microsoft doesn't believe in Mm -hmm. you know locking exclusives down anymore like a game pass deal is good for them yeah like it I under if it's a, a matter of like talking to a studio and they won't do exclusivity, but they'll do Game Pass. I get I get that. Yep. But if a studio will do exclusivity, it's just you need to pay a little bit more money for the right game. You better be paying that a little bit more money. Yeah. You know, I think we've gotten to the point where it it doesn't matter as long as it's in Game Pass, and I think that mentality is whack. It's like yeah, timed exclusives matter. The right one can really elevate you to another level. Marketing games matter. The right marketing rights, such as a Call of Duty or even, you know, Hogwarts Legacy that did really well, it could elevate you to another level. Yeah. We need to get out of this mentality as a, like Xbox gamers that like it needs to be in Game Pass like 100%. If it can be in Game Pass, cool. But at the same time, we need to have content that's only on our shit. Yeah. Yeah, John, you're right. I think um, there, uh, you said something that triggered something that, that I'm trying to hold. I was trying to hold on to the thought, man. Um, exclusive. They need to. If, if if Game Pass and Xbox is separate, which is not. I mean, you got it. Then you have to have the fair. You have to be willing to do. You know what? No, we're gonna go all in for this game. It don't gotta be a game pass, but it's exclusive to Xbox, or whatever. No, invest in Xbox. Invest in the re- the the traditional Xbox business while simultaneously investing into Game Pass business. I just feel like they're too liberal and they don't make decisions that's really smart for them. Oh, Therefore, what? a lot of their stuff they don't benefit us. Is that a new poster, poster yeah. frame card for what? What's going in there? You you'll see. Okay. Okay. It's a Halo poster. Cool. I pro I probably told you about the poster. But I haven't put it in a frame yet. I, I guess it's 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 a Patreon thing. It, it's it's Atriox. Oh, okay. Okay. Nice. The big picture of Atriox. Who are they gonna freaking you said who I'll probably replace the sunset, this, right? Ow. I'll probably replace this one with it. Oh, you're only gonna keep three up or you're not or you're ever gonna three. go be ex- rotate them. So you all I right. think I think I'm because I'm starting to get a lot of controllers. I think I'm going to put three shelves here okay. and put controllers and stuff on them. Okay. I'm about to say I figured you you fill that space with something with maybe another post. I know because so like, I have this controller now. What game is that? That's it's uh, Redfall. Redfall. Wow, controller better than the game. Damn shame. As a finish them, which we still don't have a 60 FPS for update for that game yeah i saw you you cl- cl- uh capping uh clapping at the uh yeah the twitter account say yo i don't give a fuck about this where's the game where's the the fat yeah yeah i don't i don't want to hear any updates about redfall unless it's going to be a 60 fps update i don't want them to make us forget about it you promised us it 
Um, the game launched in May. It's been three months already. How, I don't know how much time it requires to optimize the game at 60 FPS. It's I, I don't like it. I, I don't I don't like the uh, the the way it's going. How long it's take and and what they're doing with the game. Um, it's just very very wicked. You know, you sold a hundred dollar version of this game. You shouldn't have done that. Okay, let, let's let's not go down the. I, I know, but I mean, we got we got what another you know five to ten minutes or whatever. But it's just like it's annoying. Are we it's are like, we done with topics? Yeah. Oh, I'm the, yeah, we can't go down it. Look, Redfall. I think it was just one of those things that Microsoft is like, are we going to continuously put more and more money behind this? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, we let them finish the game. At that point, I think uh, it's a Bethesda issue. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe they didn't know where the game was going to go for half the development cycle. You know, maybe Microsoft should have let them reset the, the button and, and start from scratch yeah. when they bought them. But maybe they didn't say anything and we don't know. There's not, a, we don't know enough information. All I know is Xbox, because I'm convinced, and let me ask you, I don't know how you feel. I think PlayStation would have canceled that bitch before it came out and, <laughs> and, and, and did that. Do, do, do you think they would have canceled That's the it? way you said that. <laughs> I, I do. I think, it, oh, I think PlayStation would have walked in there and be oh. like, yo, that ain't it. Nah. Oh. <laughs> I don't got to go home, but it can't stay here. Man, um... You know, hey, at the end of the day, yeah, PlayStation maybe would have canceled it, but then again, you gotta look at it. Xbox also released uh, Bleeding Edge, right? So, uh, I think Bleeding Edge had more potential than than yeah, Redfall. Bro, did. they released the at game least... and they said f that. You know, they just and like Bleeding Edge had more potential, but the thing is, Xbox always releases these games with potential and never do anything to achieve that potential. Well, it, it, yeah, it's unfortunate. Like... like Bleeding Edge, yes, I would still be playing Bleeding Edge. If they treated it like an Overwatch, like if they updated, if they added more characters and more levels, I think they added one more character. It was a fishbowl person or whatever. They if the game game never even got like a like even if the game got like a, a Series X and S patch, that game could run at 120 FPS. That game was like was borderline I, could run on anything, bro. But um, it's unfortunate, dude. It's a game, and it's a, the game. A lot of these games could come back to life if they just try. If they just try. And, and I, I feel like, I mean, look at Boulder's Gate. We ain't seen a Boulder's Gate in like two decades. <laughs> they they took a new approach with Boulder's Gate. They got the right developer on it. And that's key. That's yeah, important, yeah. the right developer. You can have a great perspective, a great outline of a game, but if you don't have the right talent doing it, it's useless. Yeah. They they got the the right thing going on. They got the right developer and look what happened. Boulder Gate 3, the Boulder's Gate franchise is probably more popular right now than it was back then. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And um, Xbox is going to miss out on it. And so hopefully, you know, uh, we're, we're at the you know, at time that we're recording this and at the time that you're probably watching this, Starfield is, is, is weeks away. There's one more sh shot on this, man. When do they start marketing their biggest game ever? Since Halo. Since Halo, I'm going to say... Since Halo Five, since Halo, uh, since Halo Infinite didn't do what it's supposed to do, like this is their biggest game. Ever. I think this game's. I think this this game actually is bigger than Halo Five was. Yeah, because I I feel like Halo Five was just a continuation of a franchise. This game is a brand new IP from probably one of the most well known developers that's ever existed. Bethesda Software Studio. Mm -hmm. And I agree with you. Uh, the marketing has been atrocious, and hopefully this week we'll start seeing, you know, more and more Starfield marketing. Yep. Because, I, I, you know, I don't know why they ain't marketing this game that much. I couldn't I couldn't even begin to tell you. Uh, hopefully we'll find out soon. Um, but it's a, it's a shame because it's like, dude, like you, I can't be the richest company in the world and not market what I expect to be the biggest game this year, this late. Like, I'm not buying, oh, they don't need to market the game. Oh, it's they had a 45-minute showcase, bro. Like, they could be doing a much better job because at the end of the day, if this game does not perform or succeed commercially in a way we expect it to, all you can do is blame Microsoft, Xbox, and Bethesda for their lack of marketing effective marketing 
But uh, Attic, once again, we did what we typically do. Quality podcast, uh, impeccable timing, uh, great subjects, great uh, Patreon members with the great questions and whatnot, man. Let everybody know what you got going on before we sign out for today. Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Lord Addict IOP. You can find me on YouTube at Gaming Addict. You know, I'm really putting a lot of effort behind that channel. I appreciate all the people that support me. Mm-hmm. I want to appreciate, you know, pe- the people that have been hitting me up on, on, you know, Twitter and Discord saying they like the uh, the new direction of Planet Xbox. And, and I do hear you guys. I apologize for the state our audio was last week. Hopefully this week will be better. I don't record it smooth, though, so blame him. I, I don't, you know... As far as, like, the people that keep asking for a third member, we're not interested in a third member currently. Like, we're still trying to figure out the direction we want to go. And I've said it multiple times. Like, the problem with third members, we have to revolve around a, around a third person. And Smooth was revolving around his, his life around four people at one time. And that's hard. Because, you know, me and Smooth were able to do this at, like, 930. There's a... If we would have had a third person, maybe they couldn't have done it at 930. And then we'd have to do the the show either earlier today when I couldn't have done it or tomorrow. And I can't really do it tomorrow because of IOP. Like, and you got weapon well early later on that day. So it gets me to the point where, okay, do I, do I record it early before IOP and then do a six hour show on top of that show? Or do I record between weapon well, mm-hmm. my show and your show? Hoping my show don't go mad long like it normally does. And then you go straight from the middle, uh, the straight from Planet Xbox to Weapon Will. Yeah. (laughs) It's tough. It's tough. Podcasting is hard. But next week, let's see if, let's have you record it and see if we could, you know, depending on how this uh, sound goes, we could try it. No, I'm good. You can record. I I, I think the sound will be fine. You you, you did the test at the beginning, unless, unless you're deaf. Then, then yeah, you know, yeah, maybe, yeah right. <laughs> then maybe we need BG to come in here and like give us yeah, a that that a, person behind uh, the down. scenes in that that records it and we just hear right. Uh, yeah, that's, but, is shout that out how, to like, BG. Does it? Yeah, yeah uh, I don't know. Shout out to BG. You know, thank him because he he pulled the show last week, edited it to where it wasn't so bad, and then he put it back up. You know that 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 that's that's what BG is, man. He didn't got to do that. He could have just told. Everyone that watched Planet Xbox last week, you just shit out of luck. But he didn't. He took it uh, the initiative to fix the issue so people could have an enjoyable experience watching. Yeah. And we probably lost like five, 600 views from that. So. Yeah, absolutely. Because I think he, he took it down at the time. It, it was at like 800 views. Um, but yeah, man. Uh, thank you guys again for you know being a subscriber, uh, being a supporter of the Patreon, being a subscriber to my channel. I've been trying to keep up with Attic. Attic's been killing it on the videos. I'm trying to do... What I can to at least produce content on the channel uh, with videos and stuff like that. Um, I'm on vacation for the next week, so I'll probably doing really good. Videos. I think I'm about to have another video hit 4,000 views this week. And that's what's up. That's what's up. So we appreciate all you guys for the support and love. Thank you again uh, for rocking with us this long. As always, man, Xbox is the best box. I am the best bot. Good night or good morning if you're on the other side of the globe. We are out of here. Peace.